Hello everyone, Pat Conaty, back with you again. Welcome to this week on Democratizing Money and Finance, a module co-developed by myself and my colleague, Mike Lewis. The 2008 global financial crisis led to millions losing their homes, the bailout of banks, taxpayers picking up the costs, and society since losing public and social services through ongoing austerity cuts. Are there democratic alternatives? We have seen good examples of this in previous modules. Recall Community Land Trust Housing in Vancouver, funded by Van City Credit Union. Remember also the social finance innovation in France to acquire land for agroecology. And third, recall also the way Saikatsu Co-ops in Japan have now over decades been funding community-supported agriculture. We will also explore many more alternatives like this this week, including community development credit unions and community development banks. Self-help is a good example, tackling loan sharks and providing lending for affordable housing and enterprise development. Originally in North Carolina, where they, where they were established in the 1980s, and now over the last recent years, operating in both California and Illinois. A third example is Coastal Enterprises in Maine that has invested over one billion in disadvantaged rural communities. We will look at the community shares movement in the United Kingdom for renewable energy co-ops, local food systems, and now being adapted for platform cooperatives. Is there scope for these solidarity economy solutions to become mainstream? Possibly, but not without fundamental system change, we think. The core problem is that only a marginal amount of money is created democratically. Most people think governments create money. They do, but only a very small percentage of the money supply. Almost all money today is created by private sector banks as debt. The widespread view is that banks lend out our savings, but in fact they don't do so. They create new money out of thin air when they make loans. As these loans are repaid, the money they create is destroyed. In the 1930s, there were monetary reform campaigns that led to many practical innovations, showing the scope for democratizing money. As signposts, we consider some of these still operating today, including first, the Jack Cooperative Bank in Sweden with interest-free loans for housing and ecological projects using fees rather than interest. Second, the Veer Co-op Bank in Switzerland similarly provides working capital, interest-free, using fees to thousands of small businesses. The Veer system of mutual credit, encouragingly, has been successfully introduced in Sardinia since 2010 and is spreading now to other Italian regions. On a larger scale, public banks for the common good were transformative in the Great Depression. The Reconstruction Finance Corporation under the New Deal, for example, brought light and power right across the United States to rural communities by patiently funding at 2% fixed rates over 10 years the development of rural electricity cooperatives. The KFW Public Bank in Germany, which was established after World War II, has been patiently funding at 2% for over a decade the development of renewable energy and the insulating of housing creating over 250,000 jobs and sustaining these in the green economy. Awareness of these success stories has fostered the growing push in the United States for a Green New Deal being led by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Is it possible, therefore, to align public bank solutions to the best practices of local and regional cooperative finance providers, including credit unions, community development banks, and also more strategically, pension funds. This is the question public bank campaigners in US cities and regions from New York to Los Angeles are working on, but also the same questions are being um, uh, looked at in other countries. This week gives you the chance to delve into these strategic questions and explore ways to finance the great transition. With Mike Lewis, I look forward to the debate and seeing your reflections online. I hope you enjoy the week very much.